Recently, the Kunming Metro announced its financial situation, declaring it had run out of funds, not only owing employee salaries but also on the brink of bankruptcy. Kunming, as the capital of Yunnan Province with a population of 8.5 million, is considered a major city. The prospect of Kunming's metro system going bankrupt is hard to fathom for the ordinary person, which has caused a significant stir in public opinion. Data shows that Kunmi Metro had cash flows of 3.114 billion yuan at the end of 2021. However, in just over two years, a bewildering 3 billion yuan has vanished, leaving only 101 million yuan. In addition, online videos reveal that construction of the Kunmi Metro Line 9, which started in 2016, has been halted for several years now. 这可能是昆明最荒凉一个地铁站，九号线马金铺站点。九号线呢是昆明公里数最长的一条线路，总长度呢达到了五十点四公里。换是贯通长水机场和高铁南站，进而带动相关区域的发展。整个高架是已经建好的，一六年开建，却已经停工了好几年。但是呢，现实的问题有两个。第一呢是昆明的债务问题，第二个呢是已经运营开通的地铁啊，现在运营强度不够，导致呢这个九号线不能完成正常的审批。Furthermore, on May 22nd, news broke that the contracts for the construction of Line One of the Dongguan Rail Transit, which construction has already started, has been terminated. Now, this line is a crucial connection between the Guangzhou and Shenzhen metro system. Was eagerly anticipated by the residents of Dongguan. Initially expected to be completed and operational by August 2024, the sudden halt in construction has sparked heated discussions among the public, and is expected to impact nearby real estate sales. In recent years, China has been hit with a myriad of economic challenges, including a recession, a collapse in real estate market, bank failures, significant shrinkage in exports, foreign companies fleeing the country, successive waves of layoffs and wage cuts, and a climbing unemployment rate. So the reason why I am bringing this video to you is just so we understand that. Too much debt is never a good thing, and I have emphasized this on this platform like so many times that taking a loan is great, but taking too much loan and investing it in things that does not generate income is a terrible idea. Now, when I look at things like this in China, I relate it to Africa because I believe that we, the Africans, Are following the Chinese approach. We look at things. We think that we need these infrastructures. We some of them we do. We do need them, but sometimes we must also consider the viability of the projects. We must also consider how much importance or how much income can that project generate. Take for example the railway in Kenya that was built by the Chinese. See now that railway is still losing money. The income generated from the railway cannot even sustain itself, and they have to like take money from somewhere and put into the system just so they can run the the railway. Now people might say, or、oh, things like railway takes. Longer period of time to actually pay for themselves. Well, that is true. That is true. But then again, that wasn't what was sold to us. When policymakers went about talking about this railway, they told us it was something very viable. It was something that was like a money-making idea for the country. It was something that was going to generate the income that was needed to pay for it. But after it has been built and put into operations, it can hardly even sustain itself. That is what I'm talking about. Recently, Ghana had to get a bailout for the, from the IMF because they were running out of foreign exchange. They didn't have enough money to run the economy, and they have a lot of projects that they are doing at the same time. So if you borrow money and Put them in multiple projects at the same time. You might run out of money, 
and none of those projects is completed. And if those projects are not completed, how can you generate income to pay back the loans? How can you generate income to service your debt? How can you generate income to even run the infrastructure? So people should understand that the most important thing is not just taking the loans. It's not just getting this loan from China or whoever that is willing to give. But to invest them in strategic things that will generate income for the country. Because if we do not do that, we might find ourselves in very difficult situations whereby we have loans to pay back, but the infrastructure that those loans were invested into are not generating any income. That will put us in a very, very difficult situation. But you guys out there, what is your take on this whole crisis in China? And do you think that we Africans or our African leaders are really paying attention on issues like this? Do you think that they are really taking their time to reevaluate or to really examine the kind of investment we are doing in Africa to ensure that we do not find ourselves in situations whereby we are unable to service our loans or our debt? Let us know in the comment section below because like always, we love hearing what you have to say. And also, please don't forget to like this video, share this video, follow our Facebook page, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel because little bit of good we, like the one you're doing just now, help us a lot. I shall forever be grateful to you. So thank you very much for doing just that. And like always, see you in the next one.